Hey guys, my name is Jennifer Dixon. I am with Yoga East and I thought I would do my very first video on uh, my home practice. I've been posting some, you know, uh, time-lapse videos, a few video clips of me practicing at home and this is Ruger. Uh, he might be joining me and I get a lot of feedback on how do you do this at home? How can you do this with kids around? Uh, you know, just it runs the gamut. And so what I thought I would do is give a actually a, just a glimpse into my personal practice. As you can see, there is not much fancy, I mean, about me or <laughs> the, the space. I don't have a, a dedicated space in my house. We have a, a old 50s rancher that is in desperate need of um, complete renovation. So hopefully as these videos go along, you guys will see how my house is changing. But right now, I just practice. It's literally on the far end of our living room. My yoga mat is six, seven years old, so you don't need anything fancy. I got it at TJ Maxx on sale. I started out with, you know, a Walmart or Target brand, and in those really hot classes or when you get really sweaty, they do tend to slip. So I was super excited. I just have a, a Manduka Pro um, mat that I got at TJ Maxx for like 50 bucks. It's six and a half years old, and I have been blessed with a new mat from our partner's mantra style, one of their Lux Pro, and I love the mat. I just have these weird sentimental feelings of, about my relationship with this weird, this blue mat. I know that sounds silly, but it is. It's grown with me over the past six or so years, so I do practice with the, the Lux Pro uh, when, when I'm at the studio a lot of times, but here at home, I have an old mat. I don't wear fancy clothes, clearly. These are really, really old clothes. I um, I don't know. I just have, I've never been really, really good about staying up to, to snuff on everything that is in style. Uh, what do I have that I practice with? You can see behind me is a foam roller. Occasionally, I bust that out when I've got super tight um, spots. But really and truly, I tend to suffer from hypermobility, so the foam roller doesn't do much for me in terms of getting into the, the fascia because my fascia is so deep. Uh, I'm so limber that it's really hard to get into it with a foam roller. I have a heater because it just it's hard for me to stay warm, especially in the winter. And then the other little mat is my daughter's mat just because she likes to practice yoga with me. And I have a speaker because sometimes I listen to music or or I even listen to podcasts sometimes when I'm practicing just so I'm not really paying attention to anything but just getting into the mood. Sometimes when I'm at home and the kids are there and they're playing, it's better for me to just have something on so I'm not paying attention to them. I also have some perfect push-up things. I have a couple blocks and then I have like an ab roller. I'm really big on trying to maintain stability in the core because again, I'm, I tend towards hypermobility, hyperlaxity, especially I'm still breastfeeding. So all of those relaxants are still kicking into my system, which means I've really got to make this strong. Otherwise, my low back bothers me. I come to yoga from a uh, low back injury. So my focus is on creating and maintaining stability here in the core. My son is almost nine months old. I'm still not as strong as I was prior to, to children. And so I still tend to suffer a little bit from low back pain because I have, as you can see, a natural posterior tilt. Makes you look good in jeans, but it's not so great for the low back pain. So um, here's just a little glimpse into my personal practice. I will talk through the poses today. It's just gonna be kind of a free flow. I tend to like to practice for strength and building strength. And so if you wanna come and follow along with me, that's awesome. If you just want to see what on earth does she do, do, that's also great. I have the luxury of a child-free home right now. My husband had to run to the store, and I said, why don't you take the kids so that I can practice? So my goal is to get 45 minutes to an hour, at least an hour. I would love to get an hour of a, a good, strong practice in this morning. And so if you'd like to join me, I welcome you. This is the first time I've ever practiced uh, <laughs> <laughs> and had a microphone on me and tried to talk through it from the privacy of my home. I teach all the time at my studio here in town, but I don't know. It's, it's, I'm actually a little bit nervous teaching in front of a camera and talking and telling you what I'm doing. So if you see a boxer, come and join me. That's Ruger. If you see a little bitty fluffy dog, that's, that's Luna. I have cats and a partridge in a pear tree. So 
I like to part uh, to practice facing a wall because I'm absolutely petrified of being upside down. It was one of my 2017 goals, and then I was pregnant, so it's gonna it's kind of fallen into the 2018. Let me tell you something about being upside down. It's not necessary in order to practice. I can you'll you'll see that I can get upside down. I can get, get float a little bit, but you don't have to float. So. If you see that online and it makes you feel, oh, so bad about yourself, forget about it. Like, that's not important. What's important is moving and breathing. Everything else will come. You'll find people that have been practicing yoga for years and years, and you ask them how long it took you to do X, Y, Z. And it's true. People will say, oh, that took me about 10 years to get that. <laughs> so just be patient with yourself. Be patient with the practice. You don't have to be six foot tall with and 100 pounds with stones in your pockets to, to enjoy a yoga practice. I am clearly not that. I'm not built like that at all. And I still enjoy the yoga practice. I still get a lot of therapeutic benefits from it. And that's why I come to yoga. I come to yoga to, to get strength and to get stability and to maintain the, the mobility in my joints. Because as I age, I don't want to lose that. So a lot of times that in my personal practice, I focus on strength and balance those are my two big focal points because i don't want to also lose my ability to balance so you'll see i'm standing on one leg all of those sorts of things dynamic movements on one feet or with your body weight in different spaces that's really great about confusing all of those neuro pathways on each side of the brain it's helping to build proprioception that's a, a big word but moving around a lot on one feet or with your balance in different places it will help to increase balance so i welcome you to practice with me today we'll see how long it lasts and keep an eye out on our social media, Yoga East Chat. We will start to offer online programming for you to be able to practice at home in the very near future. So come along, let's practice. I'm gonna to come to the top of my mat, toes together, heels slightly apart. This is where I start to think about those bandhas. Mula Bandha, that's the pelvic floor. Uddiyana Bandha, that's that belly button back and up slightly. You'll find when you do that, that helps to engage the lower abdominals, engage this torso, this trunk region, which ultimately keeps this back region safe. I come from, a, again, a place where the, I've been injured in my low back. I have a herniated disc in my L5, so it's super important to me to have this strong so this isn't stressed out. So, Mula Bandha, pelvic floor, lifting, squeezing together, up, Uddiyana Bandha, belly button to floor. This pose is called Samasitihi or mountain pose or Tadasana. I'm trying to stack my shoulders over my hips, over my ankles. Hands are just relaxed down. The top of my head is reaching up towards the ceiling. Let's just spend a couple of minutes breathing and enjoying the fact that it's quiet. And if it's not quiet, that's okay. I just get the pleasure of a practice at home alone this morning. I'm going to start this morning's practice with a few sun salutations. Things to remember while you're practicing is you always have to breathe that ujjayi breath that's in through the nose, out through the nose. There's a little bit of confusion going on in today's yoga market or just practice about is it ujjayi breathing or is it just deep breathing with sound. I am a, a student of Manju Joyce who is whose father was Patabi Joyce and he says this is ujjayi breathing. It is one of the pranayamas that we're taught, and it helps to build internal heat. Um, agni, that's what that's called in Sanskrit, which will help to purify the body. So you'll hear me call it ujjayi breathing. That is deep inhales and exhales through the nose. Almost sounds like ocean waves, Darth Vader breathing. It should be an audible breath. You'll find that it helps you to enter into a meditative state. Surya Namaskar A, Sun Salutation A. Inhale, bring your hands up, look up, follow those hands, bring them together. Exhale, forward fold. Bellies in, inhale, halfway lift, shoulders back. Exhale, plant the hands, walk, step, jump those feet back, high plank, low plank. Inhale, up dog. 
exhale, down dog. I'm going to spend about five breaths here. Next inhale, I'm looking forward. Exhale, going to come forward. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up. Belly stays in. Hands come up. Exhale, hands to the side. Mountain pose. Now, if your legs aren't as straight as mine, that's okay. You just go where you can. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, fold. Another sun A. Inhaling, half lift. Some people say bring your hands to your shin. I am more flexible, so I, bring, I can leave my hands at the mat. What you're wanting to do is prepare bellies in, working towards a somewhat flat back. Exhale, plant the hands. Walk, step, jump back to this high plank. Same exhale, low plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Let's do another five breaths here. Belly button to spine. Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha. In Ashtanga, you would hear a teacher say, Nasa Drishti. That means your gaze is to your belly button. When you do that, that helps to keep your spine in alignment. If your heels don't touch the mat today, that's okay. If your knees are bent, that's also okay. I'm going to inhale, look forward. Exhale, prepare to jump forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhaling, let's come all the way up. Keep that belly in. Exhale, hands to the side. Mountain pose, samasitihi. Let's do that again. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, fold. Inhaling, half lift. Remember, you can come up here, shoulders back. Exhale, walk, step, jump those feet back. High plank to low plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Let's do five more breaths here. This is just a nice warm-up to get the body ready to move. A lot of people tend to hold a lot of stress in their shoulders. So if you're a visual person, breathe there and relax. Inhale, look forward, prepare. Exhale, walk, step, jump forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, mountain pose. Let's do one more. I'm not quite ready to move. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. That's the beauty of a home practice. You do what you need. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Walk, step, jump your feet back. Low plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. A lot of times people, myself included, like to rush that chaturanga. That's the low plank. So a personal goal and practice for me is to slow down as I go down to my chaturanga. That's the high plank to low plank. If we rush through it, we use momentum and not strength. Inhale, look forward. Exhale it all out. Come forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, let's come all the way up. Exhale, mountain pose. Beautiful. Now we're going to come into a sun B. Inhale, Utkatasana. That's chair pose. Hands reach high. 
tailbone lengthens down, belly in. So it's real easy to get this cheerleader butt. Let's do this pelvic tilt. The fronts of the, the pelvis are trying to kiss the rib cage. That's going to engage the core a little bit more, save the low back, and hopefully this talking is going to help you not think about your legs working. Hands reaching up. I don't like to reach forward. That puts a lot of unnecessary pressure in my low back. And since I come from more of an Ashtanga background, hands come up. You'll see it both ways. I prefer hands up. One more breath. Exhale, fold. Inhaling, half lift to prepare. Exhale, plant your hands. Walk, step, jump your feet back. High plank, slow to low. Inhale up. Exhale down. Plant that left foot down. Right foot comes up. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. One exhale gets you all the way down, maybe. Inhale up, exhale down. Plant that right foot down, left foot comes forward, inhale, warrior one on the left. Exhale, plant the hands down, shift the weight, the left leg back, chaturanga, slow with control. Inhale up, dog. Exhale, down dog. Five breaths. Looking forward on the inhale, let's come forward. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. Stay here, exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, Samasitihi. Nice, let's do that again. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Move those feet back. High plank, low plank. Try to keep it all one level here. Inhale, the up dog. Exhale, down dog. Plant that left foot down. Right foot comes forward, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Right foot plants, left foot comes forward, chaturanga. Exhale. Oh, that was warrior one, excuse me, chaturanga. Inhale up. Exhale down. So you'll notice that I can roll over onto my feet. That's not necessary. Most people step, but my yoga teacher, um, Donna, she's passed away. She always talked about how there was therapeutic benefits and learning how you can come from that up dog to down dog by rolling over the feet. And since I am, oh gosh, hereditarily predisposed to some feet issues, I'm trying to do everything I can to keep my feet mobile. Inhale, let's look between the hands and let's come forward. Half lift, bellies in, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, mountain pose. Now we're going to open up to warrior two. Inhale, Utkatasana. So a sun A with a warrior two thrown in. I mean a sun B, rather. Goodness gracious. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Move through your vinyasa. So that's this high plank, low plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left foot plants, right foot forward, warrior one. Stay here. One more inhale. Open up, warrior two. Let's do one more breath here. Now windmill those hands down. 
Bring that right foot back, high plank, and let's hold. We're going to just build a little bit of heat here in the belly. Now remember, plank is also available to you with your knees down. What's the most important is that your belly is in. One more breath. Inhale here. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale up dog. Exhale down dog. Catch your breath. One breath in. One breath out. Right foot plants, left foot forward. Warrior one. We're going to open up warrior two. Smile. This right hand, this back hand is active. A lot of times it likes to dangle. We're trying to have it be parallel to the back of the mat. That's a little bit of an exercise for that shoulder. One more breath. Windmill those hands down. Bring the left foot back. Hold this plank. Now, Try not to collapse here in the shoulders and in the belly. No soup bowls. You want to stay strong. Puff up in between the shoulder blades. That's really going to get some activity and some strength for the upper body. Plank is hard. You're working basically every major muscle. We want to get that torso strong. One more breath. Inhale here. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale up, exhale down dog. Let's take two breaths here. Inhale, let's go back to high plank. One more inhale. Now, we're going to open up, plant that right hand down, come over to the outside of the right foot, Vashisthasana on the right or side plank. Your gaze can be up towards this left hand, or you can leave it down on the right. Your right knee can also be down. Lots of variations. You can lift your left leg. Coming out of this high plank, one inhale, one exhale, one more inhale, over to the other side. Lift the left or the hips up high. Remember, left knee can come down to help you open up and get the hips higher. Right leg can come up. Just lots of variations to keep these obliques working. You can have your feet stacked in front of each other or stacked on top of each other. Let's do one more breath. Ground that right hand down. Hold this plank in here. The belly should be talking. Chaturanga. Hold it here. Hold it here. Inhale up, dog. Exhale, down dog. Couple of breaths here. Let's catch our breath. One more breath. Now, we're going to inhale, come to high plank. Keep that belly engaged. Pick up the right foot. Try to keep the hips even. What's going to happen is one hip is going to try to be all cattywampus. So let's try to keep them even. This is building stability in the low back and in the torso. Belly in. One more. Ground that right foot down. Down dog, just take a break. One breath here. All right, inhale back to plank. Stay here, exhale. Let's pick up that left foot. But again, we're not trying to get those hips all weird. Trying to stay in this plank position. Remember, knee is also an option. We're just building some more strength in the upper body and in the torso. One more. Ground that left foot, downward facing dog. You should be breathing a little bit. You probably hear me. All right, so now let's keep building up some heat in the upper body. 
We're going to stay here in down dog and then work on building some mobility in the shoulders as well as strength in the shoulders. So I, sh I shimmied my hands just a little bit closer together. They were wide. And now I'm going to try to go down one elbow, then the other. Now, if you want to juice this up, you can do this at the same time. That requires a whole bunch of mobility and strength in the shoulders and the triceps. So you can go down one at a time or you can go down both at the same time. And then come back up. Down. Up. Let's do five. Up. Two more. One more. Now we're going to go down and stay there. Nice little dolphin pose. Now, we're going to stay here and just build mobility and strengthen the shoulders. Or if you'd like to juice this up, we can do some um, dolphin push-ups. So what I'm going to do is bring my nose towards my thumb. Let's do five. We can do ten. I don't know. We'll see how I feel as I get going. Here's one. Two. Three. Belly's in. Four. I think we can do five, ten. Five. Belly's in. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hold this dolphin. Those shoulders should be talking to you. All right, yogi's choice. We're either going to come up both elbows at the same time or one elbow at a time. Inhale, push down, lift up. Happy down dog. Whoo, those shoulders should be talking to you. Whoo, catch your breath. One more inhale. I lied. I need another inhale. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. All right. Let's get our legs working. We're going to bring that right foot forward, set it down between the hands. We're going to stay up on the back toes. So you see I, I sort of shifted my left foot out to the side a little bit. That just helps with mobility. I'm coming up to my fingertips and I'm thinking to myself, tilt that tailbone down. A lot of times in these lunges, the tailbone likes to go out, which equals pain in the low back. So take this opportunity to tilt the pelvis forward. You're going to feel that activate the glute and the hammy, which is what we want, right? Fingertips get really light. Now, my left knee is bending because my hip flexor on the left is not quite ready for this. So you can have a bent knee working towards straight, yogi's choice. What you want to feel is work here in this butt. We don't want to feel crampiness here in this low back. And we also don't want it to be super painful in the hip flexor. So make it feel good. I get accused of saying that too often. But it's true. If yoga doesn't feel good, then we're not doing it right. I mean, it should be challenging, but yoga should ultimately make you feel better. Now, I inhale and came up forward. Usually, you try to pull your hair away from your face, guys. All right. Hands can be at your heart center. Or if you're wanting to juice this up a bit, they can be reaching up. I like to cue pinky toes, pinky fingers, rather towards each other or you can have your hands up above your head to clasp in front of you or clasp together your gaze can be up towards the hands or it can be forward sometimes I feel like when I look up I get a little crampy in my neck that's a whiplash injury from a skiing accident years ago oh gosh I like to talk so I'm not thinking about how much my right butt cheek is on fire keep breathing belly button in one more. All right, we're going to plant that left hand down. Right hand reaches up. Enjoy this twist. Now, whoo, I don't know if you could hear that. That was a wonderful chiropractic adjustment. Gaze is up towards the right fingertips. Now, what likes to happen a lot of times, especially for these hypermobile folks, is you just like to let your hand dangle out to the side. I've stopped doing that recently because here's the thing. Do we need to be that open? Am I searching for sensation? We don't need to search for sensation. We need to search for strength. And it's okay if it doesn't feel like you're ultimately stretching all the way out. That's okay. If you can get like this, that probably means you need to build a little more strength, in my opinion. At least it does for me. All right, my right leg is on fire. I'm going to ground that right hand down. Try to pick up my right foot right where it is without making a sound. And then shoot it back. Chaturanga. Inhale up, exhale down. Couple breaths here. One more. 
All good things must be done on both sides. Inhale, high plank. Just building some heat. So again, we're not having our booties up like down dog, but we're also not scooping down. Try to stay strong. All right, so options. You can come to crescent lunge from uh, plank, or you can come from down dog. I challenge you to try it from plank. It engages the abs a little bit more. Left foot comes up, sets down. Woo! Right leg might have to come out to the side a little bit. Coming up to the fingertips, remember that tailbone has to lengthen down. You probably saw my belly come in just a bit. That's to protect the back. That's getting the belly a little bit stronger. So your hands can be here on the mat or they can be hovering. You're feeling the outside of that left leg really talk to you. Like holy moly, glute and hamstring work. So you'll see that I'm able to keep this leg a little more straight. That just means this hip flexor is a little more open today. Every day is different, guys. And everybody is a little more flexible or less flexible. So if your knee is more like this, Totally okay. We're working on pushing back through that back heel. Let's come all the way up. So again, remember your hands can be at your heart center. They can also be back here if you're like starting to have trouble controlling your breath because we are supposed to be breathing in and out of our nose. Or you can have them all the way up, pinkies rotating towards each other or hands clasped together. Let's do a couple more breaths here. All right, we're going to ground down through that right hand. Left hand's going to reach up. Maybe it's a nice, good adjustment, stretch, what have you. Really twisting into the spine, wringing out everything. The Yoga Mala says that twists help to detoxify, to burn out rather. I don't think they use detoxify in that book, but it does help to also burn fat, eliminate body fat, belly fat rather. So let's twist this out. One more breath. So plant those hands down. See if you can pick that left foot up. I'm making that noise. Set it down at the back of the mat. Hold this plank here because we can. One more. All right, chaturanga. Inhaling to up dog. Exhale, down dog. Oh, goodness gracious, let's catch our breath. So remember, especially since this is a video, if you start to breathe too heavy, you can always come, well, in any time, even if you're in class. Child's pose is also an option to help you gather your breath, to gather yourself, and hitting pause is also an option. I've still got a little bit of juice left in me, so I'm going to come back up to my down dog. So, <laughs> while we're here, we've got some options. You can stay in, this chi in the child's pose that I just demonstrated. You can come up to down dog, or we can do some more shoulder work, some more upper body strength. So, from down dog, the wider your down dog, the slightly easier this will be. So, the shorter your down dog, the harder it's going to be, we're going to do down dog push-ups. So I'm going to go back to about a natural down dog stance for me. I, have a, I tend to have a shorter down dog stance that comes from my Ashtanga background. I know other lineages have a wider down dog, but for me, this is, this is my down dog. I'm going to sit there and think to myself, I can do this because these are really, really hard. And then we're going to aim for 10. Remember, push down a lot between the thumb and the pointer fingers. Inhale, whoo, big inhale and exhale. Let's do it. Inhale, exhale, elbows out for these down dog push-ups. So it's a little bit different than chaturangas where the elbows are back. I'm on four. Eight. Nine. Ten. Nice. Okay. Okay. So we have some options. If you're like me and you're up against the wall, we can use that new strength that we have in our shoulders and the fact that our bellies are nice and warm, and we can work on donkey kicking up to the, up to the wall. So this can be really, really, really challenging. So staying here in down dog is totally acceptable. This is building strength in the shoulders. If you want to work on building a little bit more strength, you can do more down dog push-ups 
with a shorter stance. If you want to work on jumping up because everybody loves inversions, things you got to think about is belly in, looking forward, belly, belly, belly in. And then you want to ju- you have to kick your bottom basically forward, which is why I like to have the, the wall. There's a, a little bit of a learning curve on how much force you have to use to get your bottom up. Okay, this is coming from a girl with a, a larger posterior than most. So I know if you are shaped a little bit differently than me, then these cues might not be perfect for you. But for me, I have to, I have to figure out how much effort it's going to take to get the hips up. And this takes time, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm looking forward, coming to my toes, bending, jump, shoot it back. Now, you might not get up. You might just barely get up. That's okay. You just keep practicing. So for me, I have to come to my toes, shoot back to get the momentum, lift up. Now, okay, guys, I'm floating. That's not going to happen your first day, okay? So don't feel bad if you don't. Also, don't feel bad if you bend your toes and you kick up and then you kick back to the wall. That's totally okay. That's why the wall is there. What is important is learning that it's okay to have your weight on your hands. It's okay to kind of, at least for me, I was, I'm still deathly afraid of being upside down, folks. It's okay. It's, it's, it's about repetition, teaching your body that it's okay to be upside down. I like to be on my feet, plain and, plain and simple. I don't like to be upside down on my hands or anything like that. It took me five years just to feel comfortable with a headstand. And to this day, I still don't like headstands. So it's okay if you kick yourself into the wall. It's okay if you can't get that float yet. Just keep practicing. There's lots and lots of reasons. It's strength here, strength here, strength all in your upper body, but then it's also here. And so I would venture to guess that a lot of it is here, getting this in line with the rest of your body. We're strong people. We are we're a lot stronger than we think we are. So if you can do those dolphin push-ups and those down dog push-ups and you can do them and they're no big deal, and you can do those planks like we were doing, I'm going to venture to guess that it's, it's getting your mind to line up with your body. And so the only thing I can tell you is to keep practicing. But here's the thing. Don't keep doing it so much when you hurt, especially if you're starting out. I've been practicing, like I said, almost 10 years, and I don't practice jumping up every single day. That's a lot of wear and tear on your hands and your joints. I'm closer to 40 than I am 30. So, again, I, these guys are, these bones are a lot smaller than these bones down here. So be mindful, okay? We're going to try a couple of more donkey kicks. Hopefully that talking gave you a little bit of a break. You're going to see I'm bending down, kicking up. Whoop, kick too high that time. We're going to do it again. Bending into the knees. My elbows have to bend a little bit because I have to lift a lot up. I know that it's traditionally taught you keep your elbows straight, but I'll be honest with you. I've never had good success lifting all of this mass down here without a little bit of extra help from my biceps and shoulders. So inhale, kicking up, shoot it down. One more time. Inhale, kicking up. Maybe you float. Maybe you hit the wall. Maybe you play with being upside down. Keep playing your choice and when you're ready I'll meet everybody in down dog Woo. okay let's start to flow again we're gonna do some chair poses awesome opportunity to try kicking up one more time I'll meet you in a standing forward fold at the top of the mat inhale jumping up slow it down half lift and forward fold inhale chair pose so chair pose is awesome. You are working all of these big muscles. So your quads are huge, your uh, glutes are huge. Everything in the southern hemisphere is a big muscle. That's why you'll hear me. I'm kind of breathing a little heavy. Totally okay. Hands to your heart center if your heart is up a little too much. Hands up high if you want to juice it up a little more. Sink into that chair. One more. I'm going to bring my hands to my heart. Think to myself, I can do this. Ground down a lot through that right foot. Channel my inner karate kid. Come on, Daniel sons and daughters. Pick up that left knee. So this is where we're working on that proprioception. If you want, you can try to do a small movement here on the right. So that's going to build more heat in the right leg, the right glute. But what it's also doing is teaching you some proprioception. It's helping to rewire those things. All right, coming to stillness in this one-legged chair, shoot that left leg back. 
Here we are in a warrior three pose. Hands at your heart center is a little bit easier than hands forward. I'm a little too close to my wall to have my hands forward. Working on trying to have those hips stacked. So you notice my hips were uneven. Still working on it, guys. This is really making that right butt cheek work. Let's make the right butt cheek work a little more. Plant the hands down, standing splits. Mini break, hamstrings working. We're gonna bring the left knee behind the right, left heel towards the butt cheeks, and let's do some curtsies. So you can leave your hands on the mat, that was one, or you can bring them to your heart center. Two, we're gonna do five, three, four. That butt cheek should be talking to you. Five, standing splits, whoo, okay. Let's come back to this warrior three. It's a grounded warrior three. Try to check in with those hips. Feet are active. That left foot is really active, pretending to press into the wall behind you. You'll notice that my foot's not parallel. That's okay. What I'm really working on is stability right here. So I wanna keep my hips level. Now, we're gonna try to bring our hands off the mat. Whoa, feel that right engagement, that right leg engagement, crescent lunge. So this shot side of your body should be talking to you. That's that right glute and right hammy, which is what we want. We've been here before. We can do that same twist we did earlier, left hand down, right hand up, or hands to heart center, left elbow to the outside of that right thigh. You can look down at the right knee or the right big toe, or you can look up towards the ceiling. Now, we're working those thumbs into the chest. If that's not happening today, totally okay. Optional is you can ground that left hand to the outside of the right foot. Right hand can come up or forward. All right, come back to your crescent lunge. That right butt cheek should be talking to you. We can do this. All right, one more breath. Oh, we're going to take a vinyasa. I was going to build on to that, but... My right butt cheek said otherwise. Let's give them a little break. Couple breaths here. Remember, child's pose is always an option. We have to do the other side, so look forward. Walk, step, jump forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Let's get a Padangustasana, separate legs stretching. So walk those feet about hips width distance apart, two fists in between the, the feet, rather. Grab hold of the big toes with your peace fingers, palms facing each other, bellies in, forward fold. Use your biceps to pull yourself down. Our legs are nice and warm right now, so this is really, really good for the hammock. Nice. Okay. Releasing that. No rest for the weary. Let's bring those toes back together. Heels slightly apart. Belly in. The, the left side always gets a little bit shafted because it already knows what's coming. So let's try to erase that for a moment. Try to not rush it. The left side always gets rushed. Think to ourselves, we can do this. So our left side's about to feel as great as our right side does right now. Okay. So belly's in. Bend those knees. Come up to chair. So, hands can be up, together, at your heart center. Yogi's choice. What's not a choice is that belly button to spine, pelvis tilting forward, rib, cut, rib cage trying to kiss the fronts of the pelvis. One more breath. Inhale, hands to your heart center. Exhale, right elbow to the out. Oh, no, that's not what we did at all. Excuse me, that's another flow. So, channel that inner Karate kid, grounding down a lot through that left foot. Left knee is strong. Pick that right knee up. Now, you're going to notice one side is way different than the other. Totally okay. Maybe you do some movements. This is just to help confuse our brain a little bit and build some proprioception, which, whew, I don't know about you. Mine's getting worse and worse. All right, shoot that right leg back. This is why I practice, so that I can keep my balance as I age. Now, I got to check in with my hips. I don't feel like my hips are even, 
and they weren't. This is my harder side, guys. And my right foot has to be active. Belly button stays in. Bringing that right foot to, oh, like you're pushing into the wall. Trying to bring the right hip down to where it's even to the left. Now, if you can't do this and hold your balance, that's okay. Keep practicing. All is coming. Right hand, put, plant the hands to the mat. Let's do those curtsies. So bend the left knee, right hip, heel to the booty. Come on up. That's one. Two. Maybe you try without hands. Three. Four. Five. I forgot our standing splits. Let's enjoy the standing splits. I'm saying enjoy <laughs> like by faith, right? Because my left butt cheek is on fire. I don't know about you. Okay, let's bring those heels, those hips down. Try to get them in line. We're really going to get that left hamstring and left glute working, fired up, just like we did on the... Come up to hover. Whoo-wee. One more. All right, plant that right foot down. Hallelujah. One more. Hands to your heart center. And let's twist this out. Right elbow to the outside of that left knee. Try to bring your head forward. What likes to happen is we like to curl in. So some of the cues I some the, the wall behind you. That's Remember, you can plant that right hand down. Left hand can come up or forward. All right, let's come back to crescent lunge. Use your belly. Stay here. One more. Oh, plant the hands. Pick up that left foot. Sift it back. Stay here. We can do this. We can do this. And chaturanga. Inhale up. Exhale down. Hey, Ruger. Okay, spend a couple of seconds. I love you too. That was a good down dog, Ruger. Okay, so now let's build on to this just a little bit more. We haven't even done a single triangle or extended side angle. So let's see if we can do that together. We're going to play with our balance a little bit more so we don't have to do a separate balance section in this class at least. So inhale, look forward. I'm going to try to float forward. Half lift, forward fold. Open those feet about hips width distance apart. Let's get a gorilla pose in. Hands underneath the feet. Slide those toes all the way up to the wrists. Think to yourself, I love this, and pull yourself down. Elbows out, top of the head is just relaxing down towards the ground. Now, if your knees aren't straight, totally okay. And I hope you guys like looking at rear. All right. Releasing those hands. I feel like we should do a malasana squat. We're kind of set up for it. So let's open up our toes out, heels Heels may slide a little bit further out, bend through those knees, and let's come down to a deep yogi squat. This is a great way to open up all the major joints in the, I like to say, the lower hemisphere. So if you can't get your heels down, lots of options. Open your feet out a little wider, roll up your mat, and put your heels on your mat to ground yourself, or you can stay up here. And I'll be honest, this is much harder than here, okay? I, again, just tend to have a little bit more uh, mobility. So I can get down low. So if you're not this low, totally okay. What is a great thing to practice here in Malasana Squat is your Kegels, ladies. Pelvic floor lifting up. Ladies and gentlemen, um, gentlemen have pelvic floors too. So belly buttons in and just try lifting it up a few times. You'll find that as you build strength in your pelvic floor, your ability to float will get a little better among other, other lots and lots of other good biological um, what is that benefits of having a strong pelvic floor? 
especially women as we age and with childbirth. Oh my gosh, it's so important to focus on the pelvic floor. And look, nobody knows. Nobody can tell. All right, if you're here and you're dying for a crow pose, what we're, I'll walk us through one crow pose. We're going to plant our hands down beneath the shoulders. I'm going to lift my hips up really high, shimmy those toes close together. Oops, I lost my little microphone. Put the microphone back on. All right, hands or shoulders width distance apart. Elbows are back. We're going to try to set those knees high, high, high up onto the tricep. Now, look forward. If you look down, you're going to fall down. Look forward. Maybe one foot comes up. Set it down. Maybe the other foot comes up. Set it down. Remember, keep that shoulder active, belly in. Maybe you play with both feet coming off the mat. Give us a couple breaths. All right, coming out of this with control. Back to our Malasana squat. Okay, channel your inner toddler. I have a, a almost three-year-old at home, so I see her do this all the time. And my son is starting to do this also, and I just envy their mobility. Belly's in. We're going to come from this deep squat all the way up to standing. So in order to do this without hurting our backs, belly stays in tailbones lengthening down. You see I almost rounded a little bit, but that's going to make sure that these big muscles work and not these little muscles. Okay, you ready? That's big butt muscles and little back muscles. Belly's in. Inhale, think to yourself, I can do this. Exhale. Next inhale, we're going to stand up. Whoo! Awesome. Okay, now we're going to build onto the sequence that we did before using balance, using mo uh, balance through movement. Okay, so we're on that right foot. Ground down a lot. We're going to bring that left foot up, left knee up. If you want, you can grab your left big toe. I've got to scoot back. So options, left knee or left big toe. I don't like to have people grab from the inside because that can be tweaky to the knees. So a little bit of bonus extra credit for the abs as you grab from the outside. You can stay here with knee bent or you can reach it out. If your leg's not straight, totally okay. Check in with those hips. Try to keep them even. Try to make sure one's not in front of the other. Stay here. Energy is through that left foot. Open up to the side. Now I'm checking in with my low back and my hips because what I want to do is let my left hip shoot back from my right. That's going to collapse a lot of weight into that right sacrum. So you'll notice I'm not that open, but what's engaged is my right butt cheek like it's nobody's business and my hips are square. Bring that left foot forward. Let go of the left foot, hands to the hips, hold this out. Bend the left knee, shoot it back. Your hands are here on your hips so they can check in. Are they even? Ground that left foot down, crescent lunge. We've been here before. Just one more breath. Let's open up, warrior two. We're going to get one extended side angle in. Check in here, belly's in, right knee is bent. Think to yourself, I can do this. Right elbow to that right thigh left hand reaching forward, or you can hover that right hand like you're holding a beach ball in front of you or out into the, to the side. I'm trying to really build some strength here in these obliques and these core muscles because I just had a baby and they're not better yet. One more breath. I lied. Let's do another one. All right. Come back to your warrior two. Peaceful warrior. Just to get that other side a little break. One more. Awesome. Back to this warrior two. Windmill those hands down. Think to yourself, I can do this. Kick up off that back foot, standing splits. Now, if you want, you can work towards supreme balance. Right hand behind the right leg, left hand in front of it. Bring those hands back down to the mat. We're just skipping a vinyasa. You're welcome, but the right butt cheek has to do a little bit of work first. Float, float those hands off the mat, bend the left knee with control, come back to mountain pose. Good job, guys. I hope your, left butt, your right butt cheek is on, on fire as mine is. Okay, ground down through that left foot. Whew, all good things must be done on both sides. 
Belly's in, tailbone's down, left hand to the left hip. We're going to grab the right knee or the right big toe. Remember, try not to grab from the inside. That can be really tweaky on the knees. So if you grab from the outside, it's like a little bit of extra ab work, extra balance work, but it's also a little safer. So you notice my, I was trying to collapse. This is my harder side. I have an injury to that left side. So I like to collapse down. Try to keep those hips even. Now check in as we open up to the side. I can't go much wider than this because if I do, I start to collapse in the sacrum instead of use muscles. You might be able to open up a whole bunch. I'm really focusing on keeping those hips square, keeping both glute muscles engaged, really firing up the left side. Let's bring it back. Let go of the toe, hold it up. Try to keep those hips even. Just float that foot back. Keep the hips square. Belly stays in. I think I did a standing splits here. Woo, teacher's forgetting. Okay. Last little big, big movement for that left butt cheek, left hamstring. Let's float our way back up. Crescent lunge. Whew. Enjoy this crescent lunge. Finally, there's other leg muscles working besides just the left glute and the left hammy. At least that's all it felt like it was working on that side. Okay, open up warrior two. Extended side angle, left elbow down, right hand up. Remember, you can hold this beach ball into the front or to the side rather, or to the front. What you don't want to do is collapse that chest down. Try to keep the chest open. All right, inhale back to peaceful, I mean warrior two. Now peaceful. Sink into that left knee. One more. Awesome. Warrior two. Windmill those hands down. We're going to come and take our vinyasa. We already did our standing splits, so that's why we didn't have to do it again. Awesome. All right, now's the time where everybody loves. We're going to come down to the mat, start to slow it down. But first, we have to do abs first. So, belly's in. Think to yourself, I can do this. Walk, step, or jump forward into a seat. Whoo, hallelujah. Let's get some ab work going on. <coughs> Boat pose. Ground down through those feet. Your feet can be here, staying on the mat. What is not going to happen is a rounding spine, right? So, boat number one, I like to think to myself, feet, hips, width, distance apart, grounded through the mat, hands out. Boat 1.5 is one leg lifted. Boat two is two legs lifted with them bent. Boat three is straight. Legs, straight-ish legs, straight back. One more. Bring those knees in. Give them a squeeze. Now, this is kind of like an active rest, right? So my toes aren't touching the mat. We're going to try to let go of the knees but still not have the toes touch the mat. And actually, I'm going to scoot back so you guys can see since Ruger's right in your line of sight. So Hugging those knees in. See how close my knees are to my chest? I'm going to let go with my arms and see if I can use my belly and hip flexors to hold them up. Nice. Now let's do five small movements where the toes come down, touch, up. One, two, three, four, five. Back to boat. Bend those knees in. Give them a squeeze. You can use your hands or not. More pulses. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Back to boat. Bend the knees. Squeeze them in. Little bitty rest. Five pulses. One, Two, three, four, 
five, squeeze them in, back to boat, canoe, boat, I can't straighten my legs, canoe, boat, canoe, one more, boat, squeeze them in, Ho! Oh, let them go, hover, and then set them down, hallelujah, oh my gosh, okay, so that was the end of that one ab exercise. Let's go ahead and do a nice cobbler's pose or baddha konasana. Soles of the feet together. You're going to try to open up those feet like a book. Your knees might not be as low as mine. That's okay. It's, you'll be feeling this in the inner thighs. Working with a straight back right here as we lean forward. You can use your elbows on your inner thighs to help provide a little bit of extra oomph down. We're nice and warm, so we're getting a lot of mobility. Okay, let's let the legs out wide. I'm going to face you now because this is a nice inner thigh stretch, but we're also going to make it be a little bit of an ab and hip flexor work. So hang out here in this wide-legged forward fold or stretch, and now we're going to forward fold. Just cooling off a little bit. We worked hard. The glutes and the hammies for sure did. I think our, my shoulders are going to be sore tomorrow too. Hey, Ruger. I love you too, buddy. Okay, you guys ready for some more ab work? I love you. Now move. Okay, so I'm going to turn towards the right. Belly's in. Think to myself, I can do this. And we're going to try to lift up this right leg, assuming the boxer doesn't get in the way. Well, maybe I'm going to start on my left since the boxer's over here on the right. So I'm going to try to pick up that left leg. Belly's in, pressing into the mat. Lift and lower. Lift, lower. Four, five. Stop. That's all I can do because I'm getting a cramp. Woo! Okay. Now we got to do the other side. Mama's got a long way to go. Hey, but it's a journey and I'm okay with it. Like, I love exactly where I am and it's just, I can see progress every day. So, ground down through the right, through both hands. We're going to pick up the right leg. Belly's in, pelvic floor lifting. Lift. One, two, three, four, five. Set it down. So you probably felt this in your quads like it's nobody's business, but this also works your legs, your belly. All right, so I'm going to try to lift up both legs. I'm not guaranteeing you that it's going to happen. This is something that I've been working on. These guys have to get stronger, as do these guys. So lean in forward. Think to myself, I can do this. Woo, let's see if it happens. going to inhale and try to lift. Whoa, set it down. I lifted them once. Let's try to do this a few more times. If you're getting crampy like I am, just rub it out. Let's try to do it. We can do it. Belly's in. Push down. Lift up. Set it down. Up. 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 Holy cow. That was awesome. I need another Baddha Konasana. Whew. You do whatever you need to do to make yourself <laughs> forgive yourself for that. That was, that was hard. Okay. A little bit more belly work here. My legs are out in front. Let's do a Pashimottanasana, a forward fold, just to kind of give our bodies a little break. Your knees can be bent or straight. We're got, we have a natural curve to the spine here as we reach towards the feet. If you're just at your shins, that's okay. If you can grab your feet, that's awesome. I've got short legs and a long torso, so I can grab around my feet. Not necessary. All right, so we're sort of set up for the next little bit of ab work. The further back you are, the easier it is. The further forward you are, oh goodness, we had a technology issue. Thank you, Ruger. This is what happens when you have a, a doggy in the home. Okay, so now, Ruger, get. So we're going to try to pick up our feet. So if you're sitting up straight, pushing into the mat, you'll be able maybe to lift those legs. Lift them together. Lift. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, gosh, you got inside of my mouth. <laughs> okay, sit, buddy. Sit and stay. Now I'm going to move my hands down to my knees. Try to do five more. Bellies in. Lift. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. This is the hardest one. I'm not even sure I can do it. 
If I can't, then I'm going to come back to my knees. My hands are in between my ankles and my, my knees, so kind of towards my shins. I'm going to try to lift up five times. Fruger, move over here, please. Ready? And let's do this. Woo! Maybe without a boxer's foot on them. Hey, I love you. Now sit and move. All right. No. Hey, no. This is just a little break. Okay. Pause for a boxer. Okay, five breaths. I mean, five pulses. We can do it. Maybe I'll just be doing it one leg at a time. Two, three, four, five. Okay, I can do it one leg at a time. Let me do the other side. I might have to pull my boxer back. Two, three, four, five. Okay, now I'm going to try to do both legs while holding onto my boxer. Oh, maybe. <laughs> okay, I give up. I can't do it back there. Okay. One, two, three, four. Oh, he held me down. Oh, Ruger. <laughs> the joys of a home practice. Okay, so let's get a couple of back bends in and then we'll call it a day. So I'm going to come down to my back. My knees are bent. I come all the way down. Make sure I can touch my heels with my hands. Maybe I should have done a camel pose since I have a hyper boxer. All right, so let's do a bridge first. We're going to push down into the mat with our feet. Tilt the tailbone down, lengthening through the spine. Lift the hips up high. Remember, chest comes to chin, not the other way around. The chin is pressing up towards the ceiling. So this is great work also for the glutes. I'm just helping to hold my boxer away with my right hand. Otherwise, you can shimmy those hands underneath your shoulders. I've got a hyper boxer. This is so zen, right, guys? Hey, quit messing with that. Hey. <laughs> One more breath. Okay, set it down. Sir, I mean, Ruger, stop. Okay, so we can do another bridge or we can do wheel. I'm going to do a wheel pose. Hands touching the heels. Plant. Now I'm going to move the hands to where my fingertips are touching my shoulders, facing my shoulders. I'm going to think to myself, oh, hopefully I don't get any more boxer kisses. We don't know where that tongue has been. I'm going to push down and lift up. Now remember, you can go back to that bridge pose. Or you can come with me to wheel. All right. Come on down. Rest yourself just a breath. Come back up. Come on down. One more time. Up. all the way down nice guys all right I'm going to give my knees a squeeze <sighs> hopefully you've enjoyed looking at a oh a cute but annoying boxer today okay let's get a shoulder stand in you can do legs straight up in the air you can do legs right up against the wall or you can come into the full shoulder stand I am probably just going to come into Viparini, my legs up the wall, legs straight up in the air, because I'm afraid if I come into a full shoulder stand, the microphone's going to get all funky. So the shoulder stand's called the pose of immortality, so let's not skip it. If you were to do this on your own, I mean, you can do this any time of day. It helps to relax you, lower, lower your pulse, heart rate. It's just a really great pose to do. And what it's also doing from a... I guess, Western medicine standpoint, it's getting all of that blood, all of that lactic acid that we built up in those never-ending crescent lunges and warrior poses. It's getting it from down here and bringing it closer to your heart. So we might not be as sore tomorrow. But there's nothing quite like being yoga sore, like the good workout sore. It's almost like lifting weights or, you know, after a really long run. I used to be a runner. And then, hmm, it just hurts too much now. But... That's okay, because I have yoga. Okay, so I know some of you guys may be dying to get upside down. Like I said at the beginning, I don't really like to be upside down. It's like a chore for me to remember to give people the opportunity to be upside down when I'm teaching a class. So we have some options. We can hang out here, bring our hands out wide to a T, and enjoy a nice twist. Or if you're dying to get an inversion in, a headstand in, I welcome you 
two. I'm going to get the other twist in so I'm not super, super crooked, right? I don't want to be walking in circles all day. I welcome you to, you'll have to bring your knees up and you'll have to roll up, come up to a seat before you come into your headstand. So enjoy that twist if that's what you are, are really, really craving today. We did a lot of twists and sometimes it's just nice to do a passive twist. I'm going to do a traditional headstand, a supported headstand. So that means my hands, I'm going to clasp opposite elbows. That way I know that my elbows are shoulders width distance apart. Bring my hands out in front and clasp them in front of me. So now I've got a triangle. The top of my head is going to go onto the mat. The, the way I was taught to explain the top of the head is you bring your thumb between your eyebrows where that middle finger lands. That's the top of the head. Some people teach up by the hairline. Some people teach different ways. I like to go from the top of my head just it's for stacking the body. Okay, so we're going to plant that head down right where the top of the head is and then come into down dog legs. Now, this is a headstand, guys. This is an inversion. This is totally okay. The way that Manju says is you should be able to put a piece of paper underneath your head. When you first start out, that's not going to happen. So you might be here. You might bring one knee up. You might bring the other knee up. This is all a headstand. So remember, knees into the chest, feet onto the mat, all of that is a headstand. I have honestly never taught and talked while trying to do a headstand. So this is also very cooling, but it can also be something that wakes you up. That's why Ashtanga is practiced in the morning and headstands practiced at the end because it can wake you up. Let's come down. I'm going to try to pike down. Remember, you don't have to. You can come down with bent knees. Come into child's pose. Always do a child's pose after a headstand. Gives your neck like a little break. You can rub your neck if it feels good. Just breathing here. If you've been twisting, I welcome you to come out long body stretch. If you want, you can join us here in this child's pose. Or I was thinking we could do a pigeon. So for those of you that did the headstand, you can do a pigeon on your when you're forward. So left leg will come out, right leg will come in front, right knee sits down behind the right ankle, and then you're just kind of laying into the, the hip. So we don't want to lean towards the right. We want to kind of keep our hips centered. If you're still on your back, you can do this same posture on your back. That left foot plants, right foot goes across the left quad. We're going to put our hand in that triangle that was created with the cross legs, and then the hands clasp on the outsides of the shin. So this is the same posture, but it can sometimes be a little more gentle on the knees. My left knee has been bothering me lately. I don't know why. I think it is. it has to do with some of these things that I'm working on, so I've been trying to go easy. It's hard to come to the realization that I'm closer to 40 than I am 30 and that I don't recover quite as well as I used to. It's really hard coming to terms with that. And it's also, I have two really little ones and I haven't had more than like two hours of consecutive sleep in over three hours. So that could probably also have a big thing to do with it. But Caleb's down to just nursing, hmm, on average twice a night. Thank you, Lord. We are not the cry it out sort of family. All right, let's come out of this other side. So if you're on your belly, you can just switch sides, push up, and bring that right leg back, left leg forward. Or if you are laying down with me, I put my right knee down, my right foot down on the mat, cross my left foot over the right leg, bring it into my chest. My left elbow is actually pushing my left thigh away. That helps juice the stretch up. Yeah, so my family, we, we don't have it. My husband and I don't have it in us to cry it out, although there have been multiple times I've been so tired where I was like, please just go to sleep. So I wake up, I feed him, and it's not like the comfort nursing that people talk about online. This is like he is legit going to town. He has his all-you-can-eat buffet, like, right there, so I guess I would eat too. I still want to know when it becomes not a cute thing to be fat because my son is so cute both of my babies got really fat and the joke is you know at what point in life does it become not an endearing thing to have lots of rolls everywhere because come on baby rolls they're just awesome they are just awesome all right let's go ahead and come out of this 
If you are on your pigeon, on your belly, you can do a down dog, wiggle yourself around. I invite you to join me on your back, long body stretch. There have been a lot of studies recently about the perfect amount of time for a Shavasana. So the yoga practice, it gets in with our um, thyroid, parathi parathyroid, nervous system, all this kind of, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But a lot of studies say that your Shavasana should be seven minutes. Okay, I'll be honest with you. When With a very young family, two dogs, all this stuff, I'm excited when I get a Shavasana. I'm just going to be honest with you. If you've got the time, definitely hang out here, rest, keep your eyes closed. Give your body the ability to catch up with everything that you just did. Any amount of time that you spend in Shavasana is not wasted time. So, I welcome you to relax. Take your time. Stay in your Shavasana as long as you like. I just want to take a minute to say thank you for hanging out and practicing with me today. We are going to start offering more online classes through our studio in the very, very near future. If you like this, um, check us out on the web, www.yoga-east.net. We do have a new website coming. I will put that in the notes below. As soon as that happens, we have a lot of new and fun and exciting things coming into the studio. So if you are in the Chattanooga area, I welcome you to the studio to come check us out. We've got lots and lots of classes all day, every day. And the goal is to start offering some classes that you can do from the comfort of your home with your favorite teachers. So I, again, want to thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope it showed you, gave you a little bit of glimpse into my life, what I do, um, how I practice. Normally, I don't get the luxury of having a completely quiet house <laughs> and practice, and so I'm ex so excited to have been able to do this today, and um, even if we did have a couple of snafus with the boxer, it's just been a pleasure to practice. I hope you've had fun practicing with me. Please leave me some notes. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like, what you were confused about, what I could explain better all of that sort of thing. And again, if you did like it, keep an eye. Go to our website. We're going to start offering online classes through our website in the very near future. Until then, this is Jennifer Dixon with Yoga East signing off. I hope you have a great day. Namaste.